Good morning and welcome to our virtual service. My name is James Parker. Thank you for being here with us. My lesson title today is The Last Shall Be First. Friends, is it wrong to dream big and aspire to be famous? Is it wrong to aim for the best? Is it wrong to strive to do what we can and achieve good results and to be recognized in return? No, it is encouraged to give one's best and do one's best in whatever we do. What makes it not correct is when one is driven to work for the best, if only for his or her own self-interest and enjoyment. When one finds his or her way on top at the expense of others, something is not right. As a child, did you ever try to outshine your brother or sister or cousins so you would be the first in the eyes of your parents? What were you really wanting? In high school or college, did you ever admire a teacher or a coach in school longing to be their number one favorite student or athlete? To be praised by them, what were you really wanting? At work, have you ever pushed yourself to stand out? Not to satisfy your love for what you're doing, but rather to be noticed and compensated by your boss. What were you really wanting? While on the spiritual path, have you ever wanted to impress others with your spiritual wisdom? What were you really wanting? In the kingdom of God, God loves you just because you are you. Not because you are the greatest, not because of your status, not because of your intelligence or lack of sophistication. You are loved by God simply because you are. In wanting to be first, to be the greatest, the most important, the most outstanding one in the eyes of parents, siblings, teachers, bosses, society, I believe what you really want is to know you are loved and appreciated and of value. And until you can experience an awareness of who you are and accept the truth that God loves, appreciates, and values you, you will continue to pour from an empty cup. Nathaniel Brandon said, the first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance. Friends, in the guise of being good and nice, one's best would be wrong if it is based on self-centered intention and malicious motivation. It is wrong if the intention is just to get a reward or recognition in return. The intention, therefore, is not pure and good. That was the point when Jesus addressed the disciples about genuine greatness, and that is to serve in humility. In the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 33, it says, Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. The disciples were arguing over who would be greatest, not knowing Jesus sensed or heard what was going on. They were jockeying for position, competing amongst themselves, each one wanting to be elevated above the others by being Jesus' right-hand man or favorite disciple, or perhaps the one who did the most healings or gave the best lectures or had the largest following. But in their arguing, they were not coming from their hearts or their own authenticity, but rather from their own insecurities. Jesus' primary teaching was about living in the kingdom consciousness or the kingdom of heaven right here and right now. The kingdom of God is living in an awareness of the presence of God where a consciousness of love permeates every aspect of your being and where every good thing you desire to do and experience is there in consciousness. The hierarchical, societal, or man-made rules of the world do not work in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom consciousness, competition, so prized in sports, entertainment, and business, does not work. In God's kingdom consciousness, old status symbols and values do not work. Status and values are reversed from belonging to 
someone who is greatest because of their wealth, status, or connections, to someone being authentic instead and serving others as an expression of love. In God's kingdom consciousness, the pecking order so revered in all walks of life does not work. The pecking order is actually reversed according to, to Jesus, for the first shall be last and the last shall be first. What does work in God's kingdom consciousness? What works in God's kingdom is to seek to experience the love of God and from that experience to be so filled with love that you desire to share it with others. What works in God's kingdom consciousness is to remain teachable while practicing the truths you've already learned and incorporated into your life. What works in God's kingdom is treating yourself and everyone you meet as a holy person, as sacred. There's a difference between wanting to be first or best and being fully present to give of your best. Thich Nhat Hanh, in his book Touching Peace, said, The miracle is not to walk on thin air or water, but to walk on earth. It's been said that we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Norman McEwen wrote a short, very moving commentary on one of his life experiences. He wrote, I'm a local businessman in my own community, and sometimes to relieve stress and to put perspective into life, I volunteer at a soup kitchen in one of the city's poorer districts. On one of my shifts, I was sweeping up outside when I saw an elderly lady come around the corner. She was wearing an old flower print dress, a faded yellow knit sweater, and a pair of tattered black shoes. The night was very cold, and I couldn't help but notice she had no socks on. When I asked her where her socks were, she told me she didn't own any. I looked down at this frail woman, and I knew she needed so many things, but what I could offer her right then was a pair of worn socks. Hmm. I took off my running shoes and pulled off my new white socks and put them on her right there in the parking lot. I considered it a very small act of kindness, but I, I will always remember her response. She looked up at me with such a love as a grandmother would look at her grandson. And she said, thank you. Thank you very much. If there is one thing I love, it's going to bed at night with warm feet. I can't remember the last time I did. I drove home that night with a swelled heart. The following night, I was working another shift at the soup kitchen when two police officers walked in. They wanted to get some information about a woman whom a neighbor had found dead. They showed me a picture of the woman to whom I had given my socks. I painfully asked them what had happened. The police told me she was an elderly widow with no family and few friends. She lived in an old shack of a house with no heat, about two blocks away. A neighbor who visited her occasionally found her. As I poured the officers a cup of coffee, I said, what a sad story. The officer looked up from his coffee and said, you know, I was there when the coroner picked up the body. It's the strangest thing, but I swear I saw a look of complete contentment on her face, a look of satisfaction of comfort and peace. I hope I look that way when I go. I drove home that night thinking about the difficult life that lady must have had, about all the hardship and, and loneliness she must have endured. Then I remembered the words she said when I put my socks on her feet. If there's one thing I love, it's going to bed with warm feet. Materially, I didn't give this lady very much but internally, I can't help but think I gave her a little bit of comfort on her last night on earth. Hmm. Many years ago, Mother Teresa captured the respect of people all over the world. Why? She had no royal status, no possessions. She was physically weak and old. Her primary work was providing a safe place for destitute street people to die in. Does that work usually carry clout with the politicians or industrialists or world leaders? No. 
yet her funeral was attended by the most important people in the world, as well as many of the most impoverished. Mother Teresa taught the law of love and the necessity of service along with the essential, with the essential practice of humility, prayer, and devotion to God. She was authentically herself and a servant to all. John Ruskin wrote, I believe that the first test of a truly great man is his humility. Friends, in the Bible, Jesus described and explained who the real master is. He identified and defined who the greatest of all, who is the leader of all, and it's the person who is willing to be the last of all and servant of all. It's not position, rank, level of intelligence or wisdom or power that will determine who you are. Jesus' concept of greatness is of service and humility. It's to serve others and not oneself, to be the last so that others may be served first. Our love of God is inseparable with our love of our neighbor. To serve humanity and all of creation is not only great, but the greatest. To be first is to be the last of all and servant of all. In this way, one achieves greatness. Let us always be mindful of our intentions when we pursue, perform, and accomplish anything in life, be it a short plan or a strategic project. We only become great when the intention is pure and real, to love God and neighbor, and to serve God and neighbor. That is what makes you first. Friends, are you willing to do this with me today? Well, thank you all, and God bless you.